Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a sci-fi horror film, The New Mutants 2020. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in a native reservation in America, where a teenage girl, Danielle, wakes up from her piggy sleep to the alarming tone of her father. There's a tornado about to hit the reservation, and the father needs to bring her to the woods for safety. He then asks her to hide behind a tree while he returns to rescue others, but she chooses to stay behind. Just then, a growl emerges nearby and attacks the father. He shouts in pain as he hurls across the wood and drops dead in front of Danielle. At the sight of her dead father, she runs away as the growl looms nearer, but she trips over a branch and falls, subsequently losing consciousness. Danielle shortly wakes up and finds herself cuffed to a bed. She brings along the bed near the window to survey the unfamiliar place. A woman in a lab coat enters the room and introduces herself as the doctor in charge of Milbury Hospital. Doctor promises to give answers if Danielle composes herself. When Danielle finally calms down, Doctor returns a miniature wooden bear necklace to her. Afterward, Doctor brings Danielle to her office to introduce the mutants, which are humans who undergo mutation and eventually gain superpowers during puberty. Mildery Hospital is built primarily to assist new mutants in achieving mastery and control over their superpowers, which helps them not to cause any harm to others. Since Danielle doesn't know of her true powers yet, Milbury Hospital is the right training ground for her to discover them. The next day, Danielle meets the other new mutants during a group session with Doctor. First, Samuel is an American mutant who uses thermochemical energy to propel and soar in the sky at his own will. He's sent to the hospital because he accidentally killed his father and co-workers at the mine on his first day. The whole mine collapsed over them when his claustrophobia triggered his superpower. Second, Limbo Girl is a sorceress mutant from Russia and the ruler of her demonic realm, Limbo. Her familiar is a hand puppet dragon that turns into a real dragon whenever she teleports in and out of Limbo. She's at the hospital because she murdered her 18 abusers. She calls them smiling men because they smile every time they do something bad to her. Third, Solar Boy is a rich Brazilian mutant who turns into a human torch due to his ability to absorb solar energy and then channel it out of his body. He can activate his power at his own will or can be inadvertently stimulated by intense emotions. He's at the hospital because he accidentally incinerated his girlfriend. Lastly, Wolfie is a Scottish werewolf. She's at the facility because she murdered the priest who branded her as a witch after confiding to him her true nature of being a werewolf. Doctor advises everyone to follow the rules if they want to leave. However, Limbo Girl is so eager to leave, and so Doctor asks her to give Danielle a tour along the way. The hospital only consists of the main building, dormitory, chapel, and garden. After that, Limbo Girl begins to vandalize the fountain, and Danielle wonders about the outside world. She notices there's no fence around, and Limbo Girl even instigates her to run away to the closest town, which is 20 miles away. Danielle then grabs the chance and flees from the hospital. Wolfie in her wolf form runs with her, then shortly witnesses Danielle ram against the force shield dome created by Doctor and rebounds across the field. Limbo Girl ridicules Danielle for assuming they can easily go out. She then reveals that they're stuck in a cage forever with no way out. Danielle tries to tackle Limbo Girl out of frustration, but Limbo Girl evades her by teleporting somewhere else. Afterward, Danielle climbs the clock tower to end her shitty life, but Wolfie follows her and helps her realize that things in life will get better eventually. Danielle and Wolfie evidently get along, and then they meet Doctor on the grounds, who's concerned about Danielle. When Doctor is finally gone, the two watch Samuel practice his flying on the field. At night, the new mutants gather in the canteen for dinner, and later, they each go into their bedrooms. Meanwhile, Doctor oversees the surveillance room that contains multiple monitors. The system initiates night mode and begins to scan each mutant of their biometrics and vital signs. Danielle and Limbo Girl are asleep in their rooms like pigs, whereas Samuel accompanies Solar Boy, who's washing his clothes in the laundry area. The system suddenly detects an elevation of psionic energy from Danielle, which is linked to her vivid dream of being chased again in the woods. Her high psionic level causes the lights to flicker throughout the building. Meanwhile, Samuel gets spooked over the dark laundry room and Solar Boy helps him to be okay by turning back on the lights. He then eventually returns to his room with his laundry. Just then, a washing machine rattles on its own and Samuel draws near to check it. Suddenly, Samuel stands in a coal line along with other miners, including his father. Samuel happens to relive the accident in the mine as a mirage of his father confronts him about his crime. He doesn't want to experience it again, so he blasts away and crashes onto a sink to escape the nightmarish illusion. 
Meanwhile, the system finishes scanning Danielle, but it requires more data to determine her superpowers. The next morning, Danielle goes to the shower room and notices Wolfie's W brand on her shoulder. Danielle compliments the tattoo while being unaware of the tragic story behind the brand. Wolfie excuses herself because she's not comfortable talking about the brand. At night, the new mutants idle in the lounge area, but when Danielle enters the room, Limbo Girl proceeds to insult Danielle's father and pushes her around to trigger her powers. Limbo Girl even pins her on the table, but fortunately, Danielle manages to fight back against Limbo Girl. Limbo Girl is pissed off at what Danielle did, so she summons her sword and swings it toward Danielle. Luckily, Doctor arrives on time to generate a force field around Danielle to shield her from the sword. Doctor then punishes Danielle and Limbo Girl through solitary confinement for breaking the rules of no fighting and no use of powers. While locked up, the system detects Danielle's hype psionic level again during her sleep. Danielle is inside her subconscious, dreaming about snow stained with blood falling from the sky. Then, a shadowy bear nearly mauls her face, and she screams so loud that it startles Doctor. Doctor rushes to see Danielle in her room, drenched in blood. The system analyzes the two consecutive psionic episodes of Danielle for 48 hours, and the system concludes that more blood needs to be drawn from her to fully identify her true powers. The next day, Doctor collects Danielle's blood as ordered by the system. She then hypothesizes that Danielle's powers somehow leans towards the manifestation of something, but more tests are still required to understand her true potential. At night, the new mutants secretly hang out in the attic, where they play a game of truths using a polygraph. They learn through the game that Solar Boy can never be engaged erotically with someone due to his eating powers, and Samuel carries a lump of coal to remind him of his father. Limbo Girl then redirects the questions to Danielle, and is curious about her wooden bear necklace. Danielle is scared of bears, and so her father made the necklace to remind her a legend, which is about the two bears continuously fighting inside a person, just to win and take control of the body they belong to. The first bear is all the good things, whereas the second bear is all the evil things. These two bears are small when the person is born, and one of them grows and wins over time, depending on which the person always feeds. Therefore, if Danielle always feeds the good bear, she can't be scared of the bad bear because it will remain small, just like the size of her wooden bear necklace. Everybody is quiet after the story, before resuming the game. Danielle asks why Limbo Girl is sent to the hospital, and Limbo Girl brags about killing 18 men using her sword and dragon pet. She also claims to be the most powerful mutant, and the polygraph confirms all her statements are true. The new mutants play in the attic while unaware of the installed camera, monitoring and recording them ever since they started the game. The next day, Doctor confronts them about their secret hideout in the attic. She's disappointed with their behavior last night and then reminds them that they need to behave and follow if they want to transfer to her superior's facility. Samuel admits not wanting to move out because he's not getting any better due to his recurring nightmares every day. But Doctor doesn't listen to him and insists they need to follow the system to reach their potential over their powers. Samuel, however, is unconvinced because he'd rather be out in the world than stuck in a hospital with no evident progress. Doctor explains they should feel lucky because the hospital is saving them from their jail time. Therefore, they must use their time wisely in cooperating if they want to get out. Sadly, Samuel is not feeling grateful or better at all, so he walks out because Doctor doesn't pay attention to his concern. At night, Limbo Girl spikes Doctor's tea to make her sleep. Everyone then uses the time to play games, shatter, and do stupid things. Afterward, they gather around in the lounge area, where they discuss the identities of Doctor's superiors. They presume Doctor works for Professor X, the leader of X-Men, and is training them to be the next mutants of the superhero group. Later, Danielle and Wolfie sneak outside through the vent to watch the rain topple over the dome. Then they start a smelly workout, turning their relationship into a hormone ship. Meanwhile, Solar Boy and Samuel talk about Samuel's grim past, but when the topic falls to talk about Solar Boy's past, he suddenly goes cold and dismisses Samuel. Afterward, Solar Boy hears Limbo Girl singing in the pool area and then decides to join her. They eventually end up doing some hormone yoga, which causes Solar Boy to heat up again. He then avoids Limbo Girl, just so he can't hurt her, but Limbo Girl tells him that he can open up his heart, rather than his smelly sausage to her. Meanwhile, the system detects Limbo Girl is in her room all this time, and not in the pool with Solar Boy. Solar Boy watches as Limbo Girl turns into his burning girlfriend. The burning girlfriend corners him on the wall, as well as triggering the fire alarm system due to the smoke. The fire alarm startles Doctor from sleep, and she quickly realizes what happened. She and everyone else rush to the pool, discovering Solar Boy panicking while in his solar form. 
Doctor manages to push Solar Boy into the pool and allow the water to extinguish his fire. Solar Boy eventually composes himself and stares at Limbo Girl with disbelief. Solar Boy wants to leave the hospital, hoping to retain the little sanity left in his mind. However, Doctor forbids him because it's dangerous. He then explains he's with Limbo Girl in the pool, but Limbo Girl says she's in her room all night. Doctor also verifies Limbo Girl's statement because it's recorded in the system. The truth only aggravates Solar Boy's fear, urging him to leave the place for good because he doesn't want to be trapped with any sort of demons. But Doctor doesn't listen and only puts the whole building in lockdown. She also puts Limbo Girl in another solitary confinement as punishment for spiking her drink. The next day, Doctor conducts a test on Danielle. She first injects her with a drug to help stimulate and dive deeper into her powers. Danielle's temperature rises as she recounts her memory at the reservation. She remembers running away from the demon bear that brought a blizzard to her home. Just then, a different memory zaps into her mind, where she sees another hospital. The hospital trains young mutants into killing machines, and they're sent away if they display signs of non-compliance. While Danielle explores her visions, she unknowingly summons dangerous beings into the building. Then Limbo Girl discovers a smiling figure on the wall across her solitary room. Limbo Girl finally realizes who's been creating the problems for everybody. Meanwhile, in the shower room, Wolfie meets the priest whom she killed and rebrands her again with a larger W this time on the neck. Wolfie transforms into her wolf form and whimpers as she endures the painful scorch on her skin. Everyone rushes to the hall and sees Wolfie reverts back to her human self. Doctor covers Wolfie's bare body with her coat and Daniel asks what just happened. Limbo Girl walks up behind and accuses Danielle of all the mirages happening in the building. She then strangles Danielle and brings her to Limbo, but Danielle enters Limbo Girl's mind and then transforms herself into one of Limbo Girl's abusers with a smiling mask on. Limbo Girl backs away at once and Doctor quickly catches Limbo Girl to sedate her. Before the drug takes effect, Limbo Girl warns Doctor that it's only a matter of time before Danielle kills them due to her power. Danielle's potent power is generating substantial mirages out of someone's memory, and it may be about their phobia, regrets, and secrets. She uses these intrusive and horrible memories to make someone relive them constantly until it kills them. Doctor then drags Limbo Girl back to her room, leaving the puppet behind on the floor. Later, Limbo Girl recovers from the sedative, and Danielle pays her a visit to return her puppet. Eventually, the two of them reconcile as Limbo Girl confides her horrible childhood to Danielle. At night, Doctor receives two instructions from her superiors on what to do with Danielle. She must first collect DNA samples from Danielle before terminating her completely. Doctor then accepts the order and sends the confirmation back to her superiors. Afterward, Doctor separates Danielle from the group and brings her to an isolated room. She straps Danielle on a gurney, collects her blood, and then keeps them in a briefcase. Next, she puts a mask on her face to sedate her and then injects the liquid that's going to kill her. Doctor discloses that her superiors assess Danielle as a dangerous mutant because her powers are uncontrollable, so they must kill her. Regrettably, the horrid course of events causes Danielle to lose control of her powers. She unintentionally summons tall, skinny, faceless monsters with pointy teeth to the building, causing chaos to other mutants. Limbo Girl fears them because they're mirages of her abusers, so she seeks refuge in Limbo to hide from them. Meanwhile, Solar Boy tries to use his powers to break through the shrunken force shield. Samuel shortly reunites with him, and together, they search for others. Just then, Limbo Girl resurfaces from Limbo and slashes the monsters blocking the way. On the other hand, Wolfie rescues Danielle from imminent death. She scratches long wounds over Doctor, but Doctor still manages to escape with Danielle's blood samples. The new mutants soon reassemble in the office. They snoop around for their documents, which lead them to the bitter truth. The hospital superiors are not X-Men, but rather Essex Corporation, which aims to weaponize new mutants as killers and not heroes of humankind. The group then decides to take matters into their own hands. They need to kill Doctor in order to eradicate the force field that's stopping them from leaving the place. Soon, the group corners Doctor in a room, but she uses her remaining strength to contain each of them in a bubble, except Danielle, whose bubble gradually shrinks to crush her to death. Danielle then summons Demon Bear into reality and allows the beast to eat Doctor, including her smelly part. The Force Shields collapse, liberating everyone. But Danielle is still unconscious because she's trapped inside her subconscious. Demon Bear wants Danielle because it's her greatest fear. Fortunately, the group collaborates to keep Danielle safe from the beast. Wolfie carries Danielle to the chapel because she believes demons can't enter churches. Over time, the group uses their best strength and powers to defeat Demon Bear. 
However, no matter what they do, it's still formidable and unfazed. Meanwhile, Danielle receives a visit from her father's spirit in her subconscious, who's impelling her to muster bravery to overcome her fear. The movie ends with Danielle finally awakened from slumber. The morning light casts over Danielle as she courageously confronts Demon Bear with confidence. She puts Demon Bear to sleep like a sleepy pig because there's nothing to fight with anymore. She removes her necklace and puts it inside her pocket as a sign of being at peace with her fear. Demon Bear bows before Danielle before it disappears forever from their eyes. Everyone gets emotional because it's finished at last. Later, the group salvages any items from the debris around the main building. Danielle keeps a photo of her and her father as memento. Soon, the group leads the hospital, for they're about to embark on a journey to the nearest town. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.